Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about syncing, which is one of the most important steps when making a video game montage or making videos in general. Syncing really determines the pacing and the flow of your videos, and having good syncing can make your videos go from amateur to professional. So in this video, I'm going to go through how I find a song and what I look for, how I sync and organize my gunshots to the beat, and how I use the song to determine where I'm going to cut and help hide cuts. This is one of the first steps you take when making a video, so it's very important, and it's, it's one of my favorite parts. I really like the aspect of syncing videos, because that's when you find out if the song's going to work, and you can kind of get excited when things are coming together, and you're like, oh man, this is going to... This is gonna flow nicely, so let's dive into it. Step one is finding a song, and though it seems like a simple step, this is actually one of the most important steps. Music really determines if people want to keep watching or if you have a good pacing to your videos. Before you begin, you should know the kind of style you want to go for and use that to reflect the type of music you're looking for, whether it be a fast cutting, high action montage, or a slower one to a more down tempo beat. One of the things I specifically do is look at the waveform itself of each song. So I can see if there's any high points, low points, if there's any big bass drops or any points where the tempo really changes. Cause if you're looking at a waveform as this waveform example here, where it's all the same across, you know, not only does that give you less creativity to kind of change up your tempo to the song, but it's also going to get boring having the same thing over and over. It's the same beat, same tempo, even cutting on the beat is going to get boring at that point. So I look for a song that has a low beginning, maybe some big highs, a lower part in the middle, and you can visibly see in the waveform where the beat is, makes it a lot simpler because it's a cleaner beat to find. And you can see where the big important parts are of the montage or of the song before you even begin. So then you grab that song and bring it into Premiere. And like I said, looking at the waveform, I can already see some big important parts. So I like to play through the song a few times, as you should too, and find the important parts where you notice it picks up and then the bass drops or a beat kicks in. Basically the parts where a big sniper shot or an important shot will be. And when I'm going through that, I like to put a marker on these spots. So I'll just hit M on my keyboard or MM to bring up marker color and change it to red. And that way I can look at my waveform and see those red ones are where I should put my important clips or my biggest, fanciest clips. You have the potential for that moment to be really cool. So you want to pick your coolest clip to go along with the best part of the song. That's why I use red markers so they stand out a lot more on my waveform. Hopefully you used the time before to go through your clips and you already have your clips somewhat organized and you could have say an idea of what the best clips are or what the clips are to have say a really cool sniper kill at the end. And remember those and those are going to be the ones that you're going to place on the red markers on our waveform. One quick note when you're finding a song, if you want to put it on YouTube, you should think about using copyright free music. There's lots of ways to look for it, but in the end, it is not as good as copyrighted music. Just like many montages before, if you are going to use copyright music, do a test upload where you upload it to YouTube as like a little test montage before you put any serious editing in and you have it unlisted and just see what kind of emails YouTube sends you. If they send you one saying it's muted in certain countries, don't use that song. Another email you might get, and the one you're kind of looking for, is saying, hey, your video is fine, we're not gonna take it down, but just so you know, all ad revenue is going towards this artist because it's their song, it's copyrighted. Next is syncing your gunshots to the beat. So we've already went over syncing the most important gunshots where we have red markers on our waveform, on our timeline, and now this is just general gun syncing. You'll notice as you go through your song, there's a, a main tempo or a drum beat that you can follow and you can usually hear it in the background. I'll show you some examples here. As I play through this song, I'll be placing markers down where I think the main tempo of the beat is. Now you don't have to put markers down for the beat of the entire song, but it's good to do it in certain parts where you're not sure, and it's good to do it at the beginning so you know the kind of pacing and tempo of the song. I suggest using the default marker color so that your red important markers still stand out. Any sniper shots in any of your clips have to be synced to the beat. You should always put a sniper shot on a beat. Because it's a one single hit and it sounds a lot better when it's to the beat. Here's an example where the sniper shots aren't to the beat. And here's an example where they are to the beat.
Big difference. You can see just simply putting the sniper shots on the beat makes it flow together and sound nicer on the ears. So remember to always place your sniper shots on the beat and if it doesn't fit perfectly on the beat, we'll get into how you can hide cuts to make it so your sniper shots are on the beat. Now for guns that aren't snipers or don't have single shots like that, like say a gun that shoots multiple times, we use a BR and Halo, he's gonna be shooting multiple times. Now if he turns the corner and just one taps a guy, say the guy has no shields and it's just one shot, that should be on the beat. But if he shoots five times or has a four shot like a BR, I usually time out the last shot, so the shot that kills to be on the beat. but you don't need to always be on the beat with these guns. It's mainly sniper shots and any single shot guns that are one shot kills like rockets or something that should be on the beat. Now I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I'm gonna sync this clip onto the music here. So usually I have markers again on individual clips right where the sniper shots are. So it's easy and visual to just line them up. Now don't be worried, I'm gonna have a few black spaces in between because I'm mainly focused on syncing the gunshot to the beat. And we're gonna worry about filling in the holes later. Now there's three ways to fill in those holes. Use Time Warping or Twixter to speed up and slow down your clip, force it to fit into this timeline. And sometimes that works, but it really depends on the style you're going for. If you have a slow song and you have fast speed ups everywhere, it might not look that good. Or if you have a slow part in the song, you could use a slowdown to fit there. It really depends on the clip and how much time you need to, to force it to be. The second option is jump cuts, which I do a lot of, but if you're going to use jump cuts, you need to follow the rule of cutting on action and cutting on the beat. So I have a tutorial here on cutting on action and it goes into basically how you should be using action to dictate whenever you cut, when you can. It'll just make it smoother and your flow a lot better. So we already have markers down on the beat and we're gonna use one of those beat marks where we're gonna have our cut and we're gonna have a jump cut. In this example here, there's no music and it's really obvious there's a jump cut. Jump cuts obviously jump out of you. That's the problem. But here, when it's on the beat of the music and there's a bit of action that's similar, say he's moving the same direction, it flows a little better and it's more forgiving when it happens. The third option is using angles and cinematography within the game to fill in the gaps. So basically you're going into theater mode of whatever game you're using, capturing an angle that's relevant to what's going on, and you're gonna fill that in the holes. Now you shouldn't have a ton of cuts, cutting too much, will always look bad, but if you use it in those holes you need to fill and you have it cut on the beat, it can really add a lot to the montage. And with that, we're gonna talk about the last step, which is cutting on the beat. If you're ever wondering where you should put an angle or how long an angle should last, always look at the beat or the tempo of your song. Now, a little warning is if you cut always on the beat and it's very repetitive and you're like the same frames for every single angle, it's going to be very boring. Here's an example in a montage where I cut on the beat constantly and it's noticeable and it kind of pulls you out of it because you're expecting that next cut. But you could also let it hang out for two to three beats and still cut on a beat, just have it last a little longer. This will make those shots that last longer, more powerful, like I did here in this music video where it hangs out for two to three beats and then still cuts on the beat, but it's a later beat. I make mistakes and I'm my own vices. Why am I stuck in a split position? I don't ever think that I could get forgiveness. And I'm the unanswered inquisition. Why couldn't life have an intermission? Maybe that's crossing a serious line. Now, editing montages is obviously very subjective. There is no perfect way to do it. There really are no rules. These are just filmmaking techniques that are used in the industry to help make things more professional. But remember, you can be artsy and you don't have to follow the beat with all your cuts. That can be boring. You can mix it up. The only thing that really should be on the beat is your high hitting sniper shots. Everything else, it's up to you. You don't wanna be a robot and just placing clips on the beat perfectly every single time. You want it to flow nicely. Use the dips in the song to use your slow motion. Use the higher, faster parts of the song to use speed ups, stuff like that. Really be creative on how you want to cut on the beat, effects on beats, snipers on beats, 
and everything like that. And you can all come together to really make a video more professional. All right, guys, I know it's been a long video, but this has been a very important one. If I missed anything, please comment down below. Or if this video helped you, please comment down below. If you'd like to support me and you appreciate videos like this, giving me a thumbs up really helps. You can subscribe if you want. I plan to make more detailed videos like this where I put in more effort into it. I would like to move forward and keep making videos like this and keep upping my quality and really helping you guys. I have a big Halo montage coming out possibly next month. So stick around this channel for a trailer soon. If you want recommended videos that will help kind of go together with this cutting on beat video or the syncing video, I should say, there is my cutting on action, which is the flow video. And I also have I have to look on my phone because I'm forgetting. And I also have this line of action video, which talks about how characters should be looking at each other and where they should be on the frame based on the camera work and the scene you've already set up. Putting all these techniques together will really make your videos more professional and up the quality of your content. These are techniques I follow usually to a T in my videos. And then from there I can branch off and get more creative, but I like a foundation of this like analytical solid cutting and then taking it from there. Hopefully it's been helpful and you've learned something new and uh, I'll be back next week with another tutorial. Thanks guys.